pictures of what she saw. She talks about these um, biennial cultural functions, about Boishaki, about the Mila, and he, he talks about intellectual seminars and about the ceremonial and ritual of celebrating the independence. I don't understand, I guess, I suspect, is probably the same generation as us. Um, and his song continues, really, to give voice not only to the hope, but the dashed hopes, I think, and the sense of disillusionment and disenchantment with a very hard-won democratic process, which has been experienced by many of us who were part of the post Bouchard generation, as I recall it, in Bangladesh. For many of them, or rather for many of us, all of who are 40-somethings now, we were too young to have directly experienced or participated in the foundational <coughs> moment of Bangladesh's independence. So the nine-year-long movement against General Bouchard which culminated in the accelerated protests in 1990 and led eventually to his fall on 6th December, was the context in which we underwent our political or activist baptisms of fire. And that period also marked the beginning of Bangladesh's central transition. I think that was the central transition from 15 years of autocracy and military rule back to elected government. That time brought for us many hopes for an end to impunity, to a process of initiating accountability for past violations and securing a promise of democracy, a, a full democracy, not just elected government, but the possibilities of greater participation and of the articulation of hitherto unheard, unheard voices in the future. But two decades on from that, now in 2011, like Haider Hussain, I think for many of us, our hopes are considerably dimmed, our aspirations much more limited, and our sense of the myriad possibilities for change tempered with our experience of reality. Of course, at this point, I think we'll have more resonance for Bangladeshi colleagues in the room. Haider Hussain himself now evokes rather more complicated responses, and they are questioning, actually, of his critique, given his willingness, indeed, massive enthusiasm, to engage in explicit songs of praise to the military during the last prolonged caretaker administration, which operated during a state of emergency. <coughs> Today, with the hindsight of four decades, we can discuss the questions which are the focus of this conference in the context of the several transitions through which we've lived in Bangladesh. First, again, the moment of independence. Second, the transition into a period of autocracy and militarism, commencing in 75, and some might say more, more controversially, perhaps, that it may have commenced in 74 with the establishment of one-party rule. That's a difficult thing to say these days, but we might just risk saying it. Third, the return to elected government in 1990, as I mentioned. And then, what we saw after that, the partisan polarization and fissures within society, and the brinksmanship of the two leading political parties, which ultimately led to the moment on the edge of the precipice in 2006, which segued into the caretaker ritual of 2007 and 8, and finally led to where we are now, the restoration of elected government from the late 2008 on. So now on the cusp of that 40th anniversary of the first major moment of transition into independence and nationhood, we're going to see starting, or already, already started to a degree, celebrations and commemoration of that moment of departure from Pakistan and the charting of a new course for a new people and a new nation. Given the opening of this conference, and I think what we heard in the first sessions, as well as the discussions of atrocities and genocide of 1977 and 71, but in the absence of the naming of certain names, and the absence of the identification of the role of religious extremism and of militarism. And I should mention, I think, the of extremism not just of non-state actors, of political parties, but also of the state and the combination and collusion of them. I, I would like to make it clear that I don't think we can proceed without more clarity and without naming names and without an identification <coughs> of political and social locations. This is important because for many years, under military rule, and later even under elected government, when we had governments with extremist uh, religious parties in power, in coalition government, it was never possible to actually name who was responsible for the genocide, who was responsible for the atrocities in 71. You, could, you always talked about the enemy forces, but you could never say the enemy forces were actually the Pakistan army, led by Pakistan rangers, and the, the participation of Pakistan politicians, and unfortunately the silence of much of Pakistani society also. And you couldn't talk also about who the local collaborators were, whether being bodies, non-being bodies, Indian, Muslim, Christians, whoever. Um, and you couldn't talk about 
the nature of the violence that was perpetrated. That was violence perpetrated by Bengalis and non-Bengalis, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, animists, persons in Europe, all living in the territories that now comprise 